Happy Tuesday and welcome to Bar Convent Brooklyn's Law and Libations webinar series served by De Pesqual and Summers Law Firm. In this series, De Pesqual and Summers will keep you up to date on the rapid changes that are happening in our current climate. My name is Michael Kumstil and I'm the content manager for BCB and today's host. We are very excited and honored to kick off this webinar series with today's episode, focusing on everything related to renegotiating your lease, lowering your rent, or obtaining better terms by leveraging the current regulations. But before we start, I want to share some housekeeping notes with you. First of all, I want to let you know that we are recording today's webinar and that we are sending out an email with recording to you tomorrow. If you're having difficulty hearing us and are listening through your computer, please check that your speaker volume is turned up. If you're still facing issues, you can message us using the, the chat box, which is located on the right side of your screen. Feel free to ask questions at any time through the same chat box, since this is supposed to be an interactive session that answers your questions and supports you navigating your business during this time. And now I would like to introduce our wonderful speaker and give you some background information about his firm. De Pesqual and Summers is a preeminent full service law firm specializing in business, hospitality, and alcohol law that gives strategic legal guidance for the restaurant and hospitality industries, including real estate, compliance, litigation, and intellectual property. James De Pesqual is an experienced corporate, commercial, and litigation attorney. James is admitted to the New York Bar as well as the United States District Court for the Northern, Southern, and Eastern District of New York. He is also a member of the New York State Bar Association, the New York State Restaurant Association, and has many more credentials. I just can't list them all right now. So as you can tell, he is a real expert in his field and we are happy to have him. That being said, take it away, James. Thank you all for joining. Not that I really have any idea as to how many people are on this webinar, but hopefully uh, whoever is on this webinar will benefit. Um, really the purpose of today's session is to discuss some recent legislation that was passed um, by the New York City Council and signed by Mayor de Blasio towards the end of May, early June. Um, it really, there's three major components, basically um, the, uh, dealing with the personal guarantees associated with your lease agreement and ultimately what landlord recourse um, there is out there, including, you know, their ability to harass you, um, file an eviction proceeding, or any myriad of uh, conduct in between. So um, that's primarily what I want to speak to you about. We have been getting a lot of calls from tenants um, or our clients, some of whom are just struggling, um, some of whom are asking us how our other clients are dealing with um, the COVID shutdown, you know, a lot of people just simply can't pay their rent. I'm sure if you're paying attention to the New York City Hospitality um, or New York City Hospitality Alliance uh, questionnaires that they've been sending out and ultimately reports, I think it's something around the line of 50 to 70 percent of um, operating restaurants are not able to pay their rent at this time. Uh, landlords obviously are struggling with this as well, and we have been engaged in countless negotiations with everyone from very large landlords to you know small mom and pops and i will say that the landlords are handling this in a variety of different ways most of them are being are, are rather receptive some are not and it's always a fine line to try and balance um how we approach these landlords and i'll give you some tips towards the end or, or at least what we're suggesting uh, in, in your approach to the landlord but let me back up first and discuss this uh, legislation that was passed. Towards the end of May and early June, uh, Mayor de Blasio ultimately signed um, legislation that prohibits landlords from not only seeking 
um, the eviction of residential and commercial tenants, but it specifically says that commercial guarantees, as long as they're individual guarantees, meaning LLCs, corporate corporations, things like that, that have signed a personal guarantee, those don't apply to this, but individual guarantees, they cannot be enforced. This is pretty controversial. We certainly expected um, challenges, and recently, I think it was within a week, week and a half ago, uh, two Brooklyn landlords have actually filed a lawsuit challenging this, and we anticipate that the Real Estate Board of New York will ultimately challenge this law as well. But at least in the interim, the law is valid, and until it is overturned, assuming it is overturned, um, it is valid and you're able to avail yourself of that. So what does this mean? Personal guarantees are the primary source of recovery for landlords. Landlords recognize that when you sign a lease to begin with, you're going to be signing under a corporate or limited liability, or corporate entity or a limited liability company. You do this obviously to protect yourself, to limit your liability should something go wrong with this lease. And leases obviously are extremely expensive. Unlike residential leases where there's a duty to mitigate your damages, there's no such duty with a commercial lease. So if hypothetically you default on your lease in after year one and you've got another nine years remaining at say ten, fifteen thousand dollars per month rent, the landlord could technically file a lawsuit against your company for the entire value of that unpaid rent. And by virtue of your personal guarantee, they could seek to recover against you personally. What this legislation does is it no longer allows the landlord to seek recovery against you personally. And that's a real concern because a lot of landlords have absolutely no ability to recover against the tenant themselves. If your company is not doing well, you're simply going to close your company. You may ultimately file for bankruptcy, but realistically, other than some, maybe some money in the bank, maybe some assets, you probably have very little um, within the company itself that the landlord could um, seize to ultimately make itself whole. So this re for this reason, personal guarantees are the absolute most important thing for landlords. Um, at this time, um, I don't know when this legal challenge or these two legal challenges will ultimately make it through, but the law currently says that if you are closed down or forced to close um, due to any COVID-related financial difficulty between March 7th and ultimately September 30th, let me just verify that, I'm pretty positive that's the end date, yeah, September 30th, um, then you ultimately cannot, or you can take advantage of this law and be protected. There are some issues regarding the dates of liability here. For example, if you owed money for outstanding rent in February, there still is a possibility that they could come after you and seek recovery against you personally because you were already in default um, of your lease obligation. So whether they could seek recovery for financial damages incurred during this COVID period is debatable, but more likely than not, they can. But if you suffered a true shutdown or a limitation and you're behind in your rent and it was occurring during that March 7th to September 30th period, arguably you will be protected by this legislation. What that does is it creates a host of opportunities for you. First, the landlord can't come out, you can't threaten you. I'm getting a lot of clients who are be receiving 30 day or three day um, rent demand notices. Um, some people are even trying to initiate eviction proceedings, sending my clients sample complaints that they're going to be filing. Um, all that qualifies as harassment and that's not permitted right now. Uh, we've had to send a number of letters out to landlord basically threatening them um, for violating the uh, new legislation, including the harassment provisions. And it's taken pretty seriously. The fines are excessive. They're $10,000 and up, depending on the nature of the conduct. So, um, and the way that the, the anti-harassment legislation was drafted is so broad that just simply asking for your rent is debatably considered harassment. So, it's a very good weapon for tenants right now. You may not necessarily want to use it if you want to look if you want to stay in your space, but it certainly is something to consider. Regardless of what happens, we are in a situation where because of COVID, at least 
25% and some, it might ultimately end up being 50% of the restaurants are not going to be able to remain open. It's sad, it's unfortunate, and we certainly hope that's not the case, but that's certainly what projections are looking like at this time. Um, what that does mean, however, is that there is a glut of inventory on the market right now. A lot of people are shutting down their establishments. And for those individuals that are looking to um, continue within the business, they have a unique position. They have the ability to renegotiate with their landlord because right now if they owe land, rent to their landlord, the landlord can't come after them. They can't seek protection under the guarantee or they can't seek liability under the guarantee. They can't harass the tenant. They can't, they can't do much of anything. And a tenant is given the opportunity now to go to the landlord and express this to the landlord and basically say, listen, let's work out some sort of deal. Do you have an above market rental lease right now? Do you have a reasonable market rental lease? Um, what could the landlord do with that space if ultimately it was rendered vacant? In other words, if you as a tenant, um, let's say you've got a space in the East Village and you're looking to move to the West Village, and right now you can find a multitude of spaces in the West Village for much cheaper than before, would you consider that? A lot of landlords will work with you, new landlords will work with you because they can't they can't deal with the vacancies that they're seeing at this point in time. And realistically, with the volume of vacancies that are out there, if you close down your space, you're putting your landlord in a position where he's got absolutely no ability to recover from you for that liability. And now he's got a vacant space that may very well sit uh, vacant for months, if not potentially years. We don't know how long this recovery is going to take, but at least for the short term, it's, it's pretty concerning. So you as the tenant are actually in the driver's seat right now. You have, you really have the ability to kind of dictate. Now, I will tell you that not all landlords see it this way. A lot of landlords have just been absolutely difficult to work with. They're maybe giving a brief um, respite for early COVID periods. Um, I have one client that recently came to me and uh, told me that the landlord is willing to give him, I think it was 25 or 30 percent for a couple of months, and that that's basically it. Um, with landlords like that, landlords that are unwilling to work with you, you may not be able to do anything. Maybe they just frankly don't care. Um, there are a lot of landlords that are very concerned about the value of their buildings and their spaces, and they cannot be put in a position to lease something out at a low market rent. They are they would prefer to let it sit vacant. Um, so that way they don't ultimately create a, a rental history below market. But for the most part, landlords will work with you. So, um, you know, one second here. I just want to make sure that there wasn't any questions popping up. If, yes, if anyone has any questions, by the way, please feel free to ask um, them as we go through this. Um, the eviction moratorium that is currently in place is only in place for about two more, uh, two to three more weeks. It's through August 20th. I don't know if that's going to be extended. It may very well be extended, um, but we just don't know yet. Okay. Um, it really just depends on how ultimately this pandemic continues to play out. Um, some of the client or questions that I've been asked a lot um, most recently is what is the value of any particular um, space within the various neighbors and neighborhoods. That is something, unfortunately, I'm not really in a position to tell you. Um, what we're really doing is we're suggesting to our clients, first and foremost, that they reach out to their landlords. No one wants to, no landlord wants to immediately get on the phone with a call with an attorney. Um, most often, if attorney an attorney gets involved on behalf of the tenant, the landlord will get their attorney involved, and it escalates rather quickly. So, First and foremost, we're suggesting that you reach out to your landlord on your own and try and negotiate something. I would definitely be aware of the guarantee, of the legislation involving or involving guarantees, anti-harassment, and obviously eviction protections um, or the eviction moratorium at this time. But I would reach out to them and really just approach it from a dollars and cents perspective. Make them aware of the fact that you financially are not in a position to really work through this. You need something better. And, you know, make sure they understand exactly what financial ability you have at this time. 
If that does not work, I would reach out to them through the assistance of a commercial broker that really knows the hospitality industry well. If you need a referral or introduction, please by, me, by all means um, reach out to me and I'd be happy to uh, make an introduction. Lastly, if none of that works, then obviously reach out to an attorney because that's obviously gotten to the point where you really do need to step up and um, you know show that you're serious. Um, one of the questions that were, was just asked is, uh, what are some of the cl uh, clauses we should include if taking a new lease to protect the tenant in the future if COVID or something similar um, were to happen again? Um, thank you, Melissa. Um, we have been including in our leases a specific provision now that basically allows for a rent abatement for any continued or future shutdown because of a pandemic. A lot of people have been concerned um, with force majeure. Um, that was the buzzword the second the uh, COVID shutdown occurred. And a lot of people looked at their leases and realized that it doesn't really cover that. Um, most force majeure provisions don't actually cover pandemics. They specifically disclaim pandemics. So you can either include pandemic as defined casualty under the force majeure clause, or you can have a separate independent provision put in there that basically says that should any governmental um, order ultimately force the closure of your restaurant or reduce the capacity um, of your restaurant by X percentage, um, right now we're focused on the 50% mark, then at that time your rent is going to be abated or reduced um, by a corresponding percentage until such time as the order is lifted. Um, it's certainly something that we're pushing. A lot of landlords have been pretty receptive to it simply because of the fact that it's not clear that there won't be a future government shutdown. Um, landlords obviously don't want to agree to this, but they're kind of being forced into that position. One of the things that we are really adamantly suggesting is that you try to approach your landlord with a percentage rent deal. Um, what that means is a lot of people will go through and they will look at their um, projections, their business projections, and they'll see what their EBITDA is. A lot of restaurants have EBITDAs around 7%, 10%, you know, some as high as 15%. Um, and we're basically suggesting that you use that percentage as, and you also look at, I'm sorry, what percentage of your total revenue goes to rent right now. Um, if you take that percentage, say it's 10%, and you go to the landlord and you say, hey, listen, we're willing to work out a percentage rent deal here. That way, if we benefit and the recovery occurs much quicker than we expected, or um, business just happens to rebound, then you will be protected because the value of the rent is built right into the percentage that we are offering to pay, whether it's 10% or something else. If ultimately, the recovery doesn't occur and business continues to stay slow, then you're only paying that program percentage and ultimately will hopefully not be harmed. Um, one of the questions just asked is, I've read something about a percentage lease. Is this worth broaching with my landlord? That's basically what we just are discussing here um, is, yeah, yes, absolutely. I would say most landlords are actually being um, rather open to this. Um, especially if the percentage that you're currently paying of your total revenue right now, if you're willing to pay a higher percentage than you're currently paying, that way the landlord ultimately will make money on top of what they would otherwise make should the rebound occur, um, but they will share with the loss that you're ultimately going to have to deal with um, if ultimately um, recovery doesn't happen. The one thing that I want to stress more than anything at this moment is this legislation is not going to continue for that long. We, it can't continue for that long. This eviction moratorium is so far going to expire on August 20th. And while I certainly think it may ultimately uh, be extended, it may honestly be extended by 10 days, 20 days, but probably not much more than that. Same thing with the guarantee. I have no, no reason to suggest or believe that this um, guarantee enforcement um, prohibition is going to extend beyond September 30th. So if you're going to make a move, if you are going to explore other opportunities, whether in other neighborhoods or just down the street, or if you're just going to use this as leverage with your landlord right now, 
really want to do this soon because if you cannot point to a clear identifiable um, cause for you to shut down within this specific period, March 7th to September 30th, you will not get this protection again. Okay. After this expires, you're, you're basically done. Okay. Um, that's basically it in a nutshell. We're happy to field any questions that you might have. If you uh, have any questions and you want to give me a call, um, you can certainly reach me at the office, shoot me an email. Um, Michael will circulate our contact information and I'd be happy to help in any way possible. I'm not charging. Just give me a call, shoot me an email and we'd be happy to discuss this with you. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, James. I actually have two more questions for you that just came in. Somebody is sure. asking about what is the good guy clause? Can you explain that further? Sure. A personal guarantee is a guarantee of your lease obligations. So you enter into a lease with an LLC, hypothetically. You then guarantee that lease, meaning that every single aspect of liability that that LLC faces, you also face under that personal guarantee. A good guy guarantee is the exact same thing with one caveat. Um, you are agreeing to be personally bound to that lease and personally liable for the tenant's obligations. But if you act like a good guy, the landlord will agree to rip up that guarantee and allow you to continue without any liability. In order to qualify as a good guy or as a good guy under the terms of your guarantee, um, well, every guarantee is different, but for the most part, um, there's some prevailing um, considerations. First, you have to give advance notice. You have to basically tell the landlord that, hey, listen, we're not doing well. Uh, we need to close. We're going to close hypothetically in three months, whatever your notice period is. The guarantee will usually spell that out. Either it's three months, four months, five months, six months, but you have to give that requisite in advance notice. You then have to pay your rent from all, every, all rent that was passed due, and you have to continue to pay your rent up until the date that you ultimately vacate that space. You have to get the keys over um, without a hassle and you can't damage the place. But if you do that, then you'll be viewed as a good guy and the landlord will rip up that guarantee and you no longer have any concerns moving forward. That doesn't necessarily work well in this situation because of COVID. You are financially put in a position where you can't meet your rental obligation. So the idea of giving an additional three to six months notice and paying rent during that time period is extremely difficult for most people. So um, during this time period, you don't have to worry about whether you have a personal guarantee or a good guy guarantee. The reality is they can't enforce it regardless. So they can come after your company, but they can't come after you personally as long as you shut down during this time period. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, then here's one. My landlord is threatening eviction. What should I do? We're dealing with that. Um, a lot we we are um once the eviction or once the threats to eviction start you, i'm not suggesting that you reach out to them individually i'm not suggesting that you go through a broker i'm suggesting at that point in time that you go through an attorney um they shouldn't be doing that right now this is pretty common knowledge at this point in time that they cannot seek to evict you right now that they cannot harass you for um uh rents and they certainly can't come after you in a personal capacity Despite that, a lot of landlords are pushing, okay? So mm -hmm. at that point, I, yes, I would respond with a letter from the attorney, um, basically outlining what your rights are and make them aware that you can turn them into the Division of Human Rights and seek some sort of penalty um, for their conduct. Uh, another question just asked, uh, what do you call it when they um, only come after your LLC, not personal? I mean, that's just, a, that's just an eviction. You have a contract called a lease um, between the landlord and your LLC. And if you default on that contract, they can come after you and get uh, personal liability against the company. It's only by your guarantee that they can come after you personally. So uh, I don't necessarily know what it's called. It's just a default of your lease um, that results in an ultimate judgment. But again, your company probably won't have much. You're probably going to default or you're probably going to have maybe a security deposit, which again, the landlord's going to take. You know, that's, that's not owned by the guarantor, it's owned by the company. So 
Um, they will take the security deposit, but for the most part, um, your LLC or your corporation probably will have very little to nothing in terms of assets. So more likely than not, you're just going to bankrupt the company and move to a new location, but you personally won't be liable and therefore you will be able to move on to a next location, sign another guarantee and not have any sort of personal judgment associated. Awesome. I have one more for you, James. My landlord has agreed to abate my rent. Do I need to do anything? You should get it in writing. Um, again, once this period passes, September 30th, all, all bargaining chips are off the table. And if you don't get this in writing, the landlord could basically say, hey, listen, you know, I didn't agree to that, or it was a short-term uh, provision. They can make something up. If you don't get it in writing during that time period, you lose all your leverage. So make sure it's in writing. Um, another question, am I able to withhold all rent without penalty in, until August 20th? It's a way of putting pressure on the landlord to negotiate better long-term lease. Um, Yes, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, I mean, obviously we're getting into ethical questions then, whether you can pay, whether you should pay. I mean, you have an obligation to pay your rent. That's just the way it is. Um, nothing about any of this legislation changes that. That being said, a lot of people can't pay their rent. They simply can't. And if you can't pay your rent until August 20th or whatever financial consideration is, is you've got, um, you can certainly do that. I would be very cautious about conveying to the landlord that you're just simply withholding rent and you, and implying that you have the ability to um, pay rent. But yeah, um, with respect to, again, we're just getting into ethical considerations and I'm trying to avoid that. But yes, I, ultimately, yes, you can 100% just withhold um, payment of the rent. Just make sure that there's no history of you basically baiting the landlord into this, that's all. Anything else? Mm, let's wait one more second. But I think we are good. So okay. yes. Yeah so much, James. That was awesome. Thank you for sharing all your advice. I'm sure that everybody can use your recommendations and that, you know, it will just help navigating everybody through these times. And um, yeah, we will make sure to, you know, uh, spread your co contact information. And um, I'm excited for our next episode coming up. Um, I don't even know when, but soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Absolutely.